Well, there's the condition of my tailing screen from the 2012 season. Took a beating. I guess that there was probably close to 500 buckets ran through here of minus half inch. And once it started to get a little bit of a, a hole in the screen, it just uh, it, it started coming apart. But it lasted pretty good for about two thirds of the season. Um, some of the things that uh, we're learning from this box, I mean, the general intentions of it worked pretty good. But uh, I noticed that these cross braces here, those braces that run underneath here, uh, they were held up to the same elevation as these, as these runners that went all the way down. And what happened over time, this is the uh, screed that we used. It was, you know, much bigger. And the screen acted like just, you know, it ground this thing up. It's made out of poplar. So at the beginning, you know, everything worked pretty good. And as it wore down, it wore down uneven. And as it was coming across here, it would start wearing on this poplar as well. And so it got some dips, it got some bows in it. Uh, I would take it and cut it off when it was much longer, bring it back, square it up, run for a while. But inevitably, it would get all out of whack and it would start to not run true through here and it created you know some dips and valleys some lines and you know we still ran it like this I don't know if you saw some of the other videos but it worked we got more crap down inside there but it was getting towards the end of the year and you know I just kept kind of learning from it so what we did for this year's model is we lowered all the cross braces by a quarter of an inch so the only thing running down it now is the two center runners that go down through it I made the new box a little bit longer um, and I made it a little bit wider because it just took too much time to set up within the width of the high banker that we were running and now it's just the new one's going to be wider and longer. Uh, the bottom of it, these, these plates here, these are to divert the water back into the tub so it doesn't, once it falls through the screen it doesn't run off. Uh, I've made them longer and I've, I'm working on the whole centerpiece to funnel the water into the tubs that we're going to try to take out um, and manage that uh, the slurry a little bit better. But all in all, all this this thing worked pretty good. The whole thing was made out of poplar. Just threw it together in my shop just to see you know what was going on. Uh, it held up for like I said. I mean I'm I'm guessing close to 500 buckets. You know, 25 buckets or so a weekend, 20 some odd weekends we were up there, and plus a couple of other days. So it worked out pretty good. But, uh, we're here to see uh, 2013 model. As you can see, it's bigger, it's wider, it's deeper as well. This one, you really needed to have two people run this sluice box or the tailing screen because as the material would come in, if you put one five gallon bucket in there, you needed to start to get it off there pretty quick. We made this one much deeper, so if a guy wanted to go up there by himself, you could easily run an entire bucket of material, clean it out, go back and run another one through there, maybe a little bit more. But it's about six inches longer than last year's model. It's about two inches wider. Uh, like I said, these cross braces, you can't see them down in here, but they're all held down below. So these only two tracks is the only thing that the, the screed will run off of. And I've got some thoughts on the screed. We're not going to use a wood screed on it this year. Uh, on, on these two main runners down underneath, I cut a series of grooves all oh, about 3 sixteenths of an inch deep through here. That prevents the water when it's running on here. When it hits these grooves, it branches off and goes down instead of just completely running and going all the way down. These tracks are now covered. They're up out of the way that are underneath here. I'll probably have to address something on here because water will probably want to run. But I'm thinking I'm going to run this box completely flat, no pitch. You can't put enough pitch on it to make anything come off the box. You have to get it so steep that the water just it won't go through the screen. It comes off with it. So. On the bottom, we've got smaller opening. Um, these come out a little bit farther on each side. 
and uh, I'm right now working on the centerpiece that's going to funnel the water in a much smaller chute into a bucket and try to collect that a little bit better. But that's uh, that's this year's model. It's a little bigger, a little heavier. Not too worried about the weight. Like I said, once I figure this thing out, I'll probably make it out of aluminum. But right now, it's just free it's scrap wood in my shop. But uh, we're going to see how it goes. There's a couple of other things I've introduced this year. And uh, working on the, the filtration, which last year, the, you know, a pool filter just doesn't work. It, it, you know, you'd need you know, 25 of those pull filters to get through a weekend or something, and they're not cheap and it's just not feasible. So I've been working on another idea, been doing some research on sand separators. There's some products out there on the market designed for pools, whole house waters, whatnot, but they're just really small. So with my woodworking background, all of a sudden, you know, the light bulb comes off and I found a few things that was designed for dust collection cyclones so I've been working on a tank for that and uh, I've got part of it together and uh, I'll show you that here in a minute okay there's that vortex it's about six inches on top three inches on the bottom the pipe coming into the side is molded so it comes in on the radius of the circle and forces the material around the cone. As the cone tapers down, it increases the velocity of the solid material, therefore hoping it drops down. There's a three inch hole that drops down into that tank. And on the top is what would be connected to the pump. So the pump would draw basically down that pipe. There's a pipe that sticks into the top of that cyclone about five inches down past the opening of, of the vortex. So the theory is, at least in woodworking, is that when the solid material is being pulled through there, the heavier material gets stuck to the sidewall, the cone forces it down, it drops out on the opening in the bottom, and the pipe in the center pulls up clean water, air, you know, what have you for whatever application. So I'm hoping I can get my heavier sands uh, I think it's only going to be minus 60 running through there, but if we can get it to spin down that cone and drop into that tank, that's going to go a long ways into allowing me to maybe put another filtration system um, after this and uh, hopefully deal with the plug ups and all that. But I'm, I'm kind of excited about seeing this thing work. I know it works good for in a shop for when you're running a table saw and you're in your on your equipment you can see all the material just spiral right down that cone and, and very little gets back into your collection system so we're going to give this thing a, a whirl this year i'll test it out here oh probably in the next couple of weeks or so but uh I'm, i've got high hopes for this thing i've been doing a lot of research on it and if it works well that's great and then i'll just take it to the second you know next step and hopefully get down to where i can get somewhat clean water and get it to last, you know, maybe a couple of trips without doing a water change. So we, we increased with, from the first generation, which was we were just using a bucket and that 70 gallon supply tub and, you know, we were getting maybe 20, 24 buckets before the water just got unbearable to work with. Uh, after, after we made the tailing sluice and, and, and played with some of the filtration last year in the box, we were getting up over 35 to 38 five gallon buckets of minus half inch material before the water got to that condition so there is some improvement and, and that pretty much will run you a weekend but if you want to go longer than that then you're packing going back to the river sucking water and cleaning things out so with this if I if I can target maybe get 50 buckets with this system or more that that's a step in the right direction ultimately you know with all these crummy environmentalists and all this crap going on you know, I, I'm thinking that if we can get some kind of self-contained system, at least at this scale, this isn't, you know, a little mini cleanup machine. This is actually two people can go out and actually run the high banker. Um, if we can do that, set it up alongside the river, have some kind of containment, I think that that opens up a lot of possibilities for high banking, you know, back in and near the river in, in the waterway. 
At the end of the day, you know, end of the time, you just drain everything out and dump a pile of dirt back onto the rocks where you took it out from to begin with, and I don't think anyone's going to bitch and complain, you know, until Mr. Winter comes around next year and washes it and, you know, makes it soup again. So that's where I'm at. I've got a little bit more to do, a little bit more to uh, work on, but I thought I'd give you guys an update. I see that there's a lot of a lot of recirculating guys out there now on YouTube, and that's a good thing. You know, the more we learn, pretty soon we'll get to a point to where, you know, we got this thing whooped, and we can go out there and uh, not have to worry about it. I uh, put this piece of marine plywood, siliconed it to the bottom of this plastic lid, uh, ran some silicone underneath it on the top. It's got a rubber 16th inch washer. It's uh, hooked up onto these bolts, not sure how much, yeah, there you go. It's got a little washer that runs around here. This is a three inch hole down here on the bottom, you can see right there. Put the plywood on it because get water and everything in here. This stuff isn't that thick. It just gave it some strength going back on top. I'll probably have to put a little O seal or something under this lip. This fits down on top of the on top of that barrel. It makes a pretty good seal now, but I think just something like maybe an eighth inch rubber washer that would go around here. Because as this goes down, this thing clamps, it's got some big coarse threads that locks down pretty good and, and get a nice tight seal. Uh, on this end, on the top, this is the filler cap. This is the highest point of everything. So when I fill up the whole system, it'll go from this cap. Obviously the tub is going to be lower than all of this. So when the tub gets up to the uh, right level, I have a valve on the tub that I can shut that off and hold the vacuum. Fill up the whole rest of the, the tank, the water, the hoses, get it all the way up to here where it's coming out. Put the cap back in, open the valve to the tub, and I should have pretty close to maybe a bubble or two left in the system to start it going. So, pretty neat little thing there. If this thing works out and is promising, um, you can make them a lot bigger. You can buy them. They're real expensive when you start buying cyclones out of steel and stuff. I mean, they get up to a couple hundred bucks. But uh, it shouldn't be too hard with somebody that's got some decent sheet metal skills or aluminum skills to fabricate and put this stuff together. The geometry of it's pretty much been tested and the relationships between the inlet and the downpipe in there is pretty much set now. So if this works out, you know, maybe we can make some really big ones and put them on multiple tanks and go out there and, you know, get get into a system that's got a backhoe feeding a, a, a trommel or feeding a, a, a big high banker. So, there we go, man. That's it. Echo Banker Part 2, 2013. Oh, yeah. One other thing on that, uh, how we're going to scrape the box out this year. I found this street broom. Pretty stiff. Cut it down to size. Uh, it's not stiff enough probably to pull the gravel out, so I'll probably run a little plywood or a piece of wood along this edge, maybe down about a half inch or so up above so it won't hit the actual screen. And that way I've got something solid to be able to push and this, and this will drag all the way through it and, and, and keep this, the, the mesh clean without damaging it and ripping it all up. But uh, yeah, that's just something else I'm working on. I'm not done yet. It's getting late in the year. i got to go mining. i got to finish this crap up and get out in the bush. That's it, man. See you.